What is up YouTube? Clickwood here back again with another Madden 15 Ultimate Team Budget Series episode. And today guys, the position that we're going to be taking a look at is 4-3 outside linebackers. Now, I just want to go and point out the fact that I understand that not all of the linebackers in today's video are actually 4-3 linebackers in the NFL. But the reason that we're looking at them is because they kind of can fit into that mold in Madden 15 Ultimate Team. So please, comment section below. Don't comment about how guys aren't 43 outside linebackers, they're 34 outside linebackers. I get it. But again, we're going to be focused on some specific things that make them a viable player for the 43 outside linebacker positions. So... The other thing I wanted to point out is that we are going to be doing a 3-4 outside linebacker uh, budget series episode as well. So be on the lookout for that. That should be in the next couple of days here. I've already got the players picked out that I want to use. I just haven't had the time to actually put together the graphics and everything like that. So again, be on the lookout for that in the next couple of days here. Now, if you haven't looked at my other videos for this series, please be sure to go back and check out the playlist. It's the budget series playlist. It will be in the description below. I'll also drop a link to it here for you guys so that you have easy access to get over there. Check out some of the other positions that we've gone over in the past and really get kind of an idea of what this series actually is. So... Let's move on now and let's actually talk about our very first comparison here that we have for the 43 outside linebacking positions, and that is our 4-3 outside linebackers that are good at run stopping. So I do usually break these down for defensive players based off of kind of what they're specifically good at. So if you're somebody who likes to have your running or your uh, linebackers be able to stop running backs, this is an important thing to take a look at, these players here. And before we go any further with this, I do want to run down all of the attributes that we're going to be talking about today. And some of them are going to change as far as importance, depending on the actual style of player that we're looking at. But let's go right off the top here. Speed, acceleration, strength, awareness, play recognition, catching, zone, man coverage, uh, tackling, hit power, power move, finesse move, block shedding, and pursuit. So there are a lot of them, as you can see here. I think this is the most that we've had as far as attributes, but that's because my personal opinion is that linebackers have to be the most versatile players on your entire team. That's offense and defense included. So that's why I always have, you know, 14 in this case attributes that I look at when I'm trying to find a good quality outside linebacker. Now, again, I understand not all these players are going to be actual 4-3 outside linebackers. Many of them were 3-4 outside linebackers when they play or currently are 3-4 outside linebackers. But that for the analysis of today's video, we want to try and find the players that fit best for the thing that you want them to do. Now, this one here, the first one that we're looking at here is obviously your run-stopping outside linebackers. And so really the attributes that I tend to look at for outside linebackers stopping the run are things like speed, acceleration, Strength does matter. Awareness and play recognition can matter as well. But then things like catching, zone coverage, man coverage, I don't care about those things. Power move, finesse move, I don't care about those things. But then, of course, tackling, hit power, block shedding, and pursuit are important. So again, that can change up depending on the things that we look at later in today's video. But as you can see here on the left side of your screen, our budget player for this first comparison is Nigel Bradham. And I'm, I think I'm pronouncing his name correctly. I, I can't remember exactly how to pronounce Nigel Bradham, but uh, I believe that that's correct. So we are going to go with that for the pronunciation here in the video. And we're going to be comparing him to Jack Ham, the legend 93 overall outside linebacker and Jack Ham goes for about 95,000 coins whereas Nigel Bradham goes for about 2,000 coins so it's almost a 50 times difference as far as their price goes but we're going to be comparing them in terms of how good they are at stopping the run now before I go any further I'm not going to come out here and tell you guys that the budget players are going to be better than the players that are more expensive but given the price of a 2,000 coin item you know, it's hard to do a whole lot better than that for that 2,000 coin price. And that's kind of what this, this whole series is based upon, trying to find players that are going to do a good job for a low price. So if you're just getting started or for whatever reason, if you lost your team or something like that, all of this type of stuff is important. You can take any of this information that you learn and kind of apply it to other positions as well. 
But obviously, the first things first, you see Nigel Bradham has fa he has the speed advantage here on Jack Ham. He's three faster in terms of speed and three faster in terms of acceleration, which is extremely important when it comes to stopping the run. My personal opinion, of course, is other than like kicker and that kind of thing, speed and acceleration are going to be of utmost importance to almost every single position that you look at on the field. So that's one of the very first things that I look at. And that's why it's always listed first on my comparisons, because it just, it's so very, very important that you have players that are fast because this game is really based off of speed at the end of the day. And it, all the other things are still important. Don't get me wrong. But if you don't have speed, it's very, very tough to keep up with your opposition. So Nigel Bradham being faster is a nice thing for him for sure. Now, he does struggle in areas like strength and block shedding, and, and both of those things are important for stopping the run. So that's why, it, you know, of course, like I mentioned before, I'm not trying to tell you that Nigel Bradham's necessarily going to be better than Jack Ham because he doesn't have the strength and he doesn't have the block shedding. But where he does make up for some of that is with that speed advantage that he does have for you. Now, the other thing that I really liked about Nigel Bradham, despite the fact that he's only 82 overall, is that he does have great tackling and he has great hit power with a 92 tackling and a 93 hit power. Now, both of those things are lower than Jack Ham's, but they're not substantially lower. There's, it's You're not going to see a whole lot of a difference between a 92 tackle and a 96 tackle, and certainly not much difference between a 93 hit power and a 94 hit power. There just isn't much there in terms of difference. So I don't really worry about those two things. That's actually a very high attribute attribute the 92 and the 93 for Nigel Bradham considering the fact that he is only an 82 overall item so uh, the last thing of course that we want to look at here um, uh, the awareness and the player recognition both of those things are important now they really only come into play when you're actually having the computer control this player so if you were user controlling Nigel Bradham obviously your awareness and your player recognition don't matter because those things become you essentially you're the one who does the awareness and the player recognition and that kind of thing and even the pursuit so you know it, it, you kind of have to consider those things but I will also have a user controlled player at the end of this video for those of you who like to use your, your outside linebackers um, I'll give you a guy at the end of the video who I think is very very good at that and still a, a pretty cheap price so so for uh, all things considered, though, Nigel Bradham at 2,000 coins, considering he's got the speed advantage and the acceleration advantage, he actually also has a one higher pursuit, which is very interesting considering usually your pursuit's going to be lower on your, on your uh, lower overall items compared to the higher overall items. But Nigel Bradham kind of breaks that trend here being higher than Jack Ham. Thought that was very interesting, but he is lower in the other areas that you would expect him to be in terms of player recognition and awareness. Despite the fact that, honestly, an 80 awareness and an 81 player recognition, not that terrible. They're, they're obviously not anywhere near as good as Jack Ham, but they're still better than some outside linebackers that people are using. So overall, again, I really like this Nigel Bradham item. Uh, he's a right outside linebacker. You can also play him at left outside linebacker, just like all of these guys. One, one thing that I kind of noticed with the outside linebackers is that right outside linebackers tend to be better than left outside linebackers. And I, I don't understand why that is. And I'm talking about in terms of attributes here. So uh, there's a lot of cases where I'm going to tell you a right outside linebacker. And if you took that player and put him at left outside linebacker, he's still going to be a beast. He might see a slight downtick in terms of awareness, uh, but overall, though, he's going to play a lot better than some of the other items that might cost more and, and just aren't as good in other areas. So keep that in mind, guys, when you're taking a look at these. I'm not splitting them up by left and right in this case, just because, again, I think that the right outside linebackers are substantially better on average than the left. So let's move on now, and we will take a look at our second comparison for the day. And our second comparison is going to be guys who I believe are good in coverage. Now, obviously, you're going to be looking at different attributes when we're talking about coverage and, and what I'm talking about with coverage is pass you know being able to play against the pass and what I'm talking about specifically is being able to play against tight ends now of course there are going to be times where you're going to want your your um, linebackers to play against receivers for example if you're bringing a blitz from a corner or something like that your linebacker might need to drop off and, and play a receiver or something like that so all of that does come into play but for the most part, what we want to look at here for your outside linebackers in terms of coverage, we want to look at speed, acceleration, awareness, play recognition, 
catching, zone coverage, man coverage, and then, of course, things like, you know, your pursuit and that kind of thing do come into play when you're trying to talk about other things. But really, for pure coverage, those attributes that I mentioned are the ones that we're thinking about and trying to focus in on the most. Now, I had mentioned that your outside linebackers typically need to have good speed. Now, DeAndre Levy doesn't have excellent speed, given the fact that he's only got an 86 speed with an 87 acceleration, but it's still good enough to be decent in coverage, and that's really the thing that we're looking for. Obviously, Vincent Ray is going to be a little bit faster, given the fact that he's got the same speed with a 92 acceleration, so it is five faster for acceleration, but... You know, when you look at the price difference between these items, you you see a 45,000 coin item in the Vincent Ray item, which is a, uh, a throwback to Madden 25, by the way, Team of the Week, Week 10 from Madden 25, which was actually, I guess, the 2013 NFL season. Um, and, and then, obviously, the, the DeAndre Levy on the left side of your screen is the BCA version of him uh, with an 81 overall. So both of these items are able to be found. They're not super hard to find, by the way. Um, but, uh, you know, given the fact that there's, you know, a, a 20 times price difference almost between these two items, you really have to consider when you're really trying to find and, and put together a solid budget team, is there enough of an upgrade between Vincent Ray uh, or from DeAndre Levy to Vincent Ray? And, you know, if you're looking at somebody that you want for coverage, my personal opinion is that there's not a substantial enough upgrade. And so, you know, when we look at things like awareness, being higher on DeAndre Le Levy and play recognition being higher and his catching is eight higher. All of those things are really, really good for coverage. You need those things for coverage. And then obviously he's still solid with an 84 zone and a 71 man. So he's going to be slightly better in man coverage than Vincent Ray, but slightly worse in zone coverage. Now we typically do use our guys in zone coverage. So we, so we wish that was flipped if we're looking at DeAndre Levy, but um, you know, it, either way, it's going to be good enough in coverage. You're not going to see a substantial difference between the two players in my personal opinion, uh, unless you start to see, you know, a difference between the excel acceleration. That's really where you uh, are going to see the, the major difference. But um, then you've got things like I had mentioned before with the pursuit um, and, and all these other attributes. You know, you're going to see better attributes out of Vincent Ray, but that's kind of why I tried to separate these items and really talk about what you use them for. And you really want to kind of rotate them around. And if you can, Find players who are going to be good for the types of plays and the types of situations that you're going to be in most often. Um, and, and if you're in, you know, your third and longs and things like that, or if you're in a, a second and long or even like a third and six, I tend to like to have these linebackers on the field who have good coverage attributes because there's a lot of situations where you're going to see passes over the middle in Madden Ultimate Team, especially in Madden 15 Ultimate Team. Uh, and that's where you're going to see your DeAndre Levy is going to be a pretty good item against that. So that's kind of the major thing with DeAndre Levy. I think he's a very good value at 2,500 coins. It's, it's going to be so hard to find somebody at that price range who is anywhere near as good as DeAndre Levy. So definitely go out there and pick him up if you're looking to find somebody who can do a decent job against the pass and you're looking to not spend many coins. Next up, we have our balanced linebackers, and these are the players that, in my opinion, are kind of good at just about everything. They're not necessarily a standout in any one particular area, but they're just good, solid players overall, and that's kind of what I find Jamie Collins' team of the week 86 overall, the right outside linebacker for the New England Patriots to be. This is a solid item overall. It's very good in multiple areas. Now, he's not going to be the best in every single area, but given the fact that he's going for about 5,000 coins, you're going to see a great, great item for 5,000 coins. And the item that we're going to be comparing him to is Ahmad Brooks, who is a 90 overall elite team captain card, and he's going for about 60,000 coins. So a big difference here, again, about a 12 times price difference from Jamie Collins to Ahmad Brooks. So we're again, we're really looking to try and see if we can get a quality player for a low price. And that's what my opinion on Jamie Collins is. He, I think, is the best example of a budget outside linebacker. I, I believe he's the best overall 
cheap outside linebacker in this game right now, and that's because he has the combination of speed, acceleration, he has decent catching with a 71 even, he's good in zone coverage with an 85, that is an excellent attribute, he's even decent with that 73 man, he's solid in tackling, solid in hit power, and he's good in pass rushing as well, he has a 91 power move with a, a decent enough 72 finesse move. Now the areas where he really struggles in, Block shedding, 84 is not a good attribute. It's it's not horrendous. It's kind of, I would say, average. And then in the strength area, that's the major thing that I see as being a problem here for Jamie Collins. 76 with strength. So he's going to have a lot of situations, unfortunately, where he's going to get engaged into blocks, and it's going to be tough for him to get off of those blocks with that combination of the low block shedding and the low strength. So my personal opinion is that if you're trying to use him as being a, a primary run support guy, he's not going to be as good as Ahmad Brooks, but he's so good in these other areas with that increase on the, the coverage attributes, and, and his speed attributes are excellent as well with the 92 acceleration and the 87 speed. This item is going to do a very, very good job against just about everything. And to be honest with you, there's not going to be a lot of situations where you're going to notice the strength in the block shedding coming into play. It's just that over the course of a game, you're going to have one or two or three plays here or there where if you had Ahmad Brooks, he would do better against the run than Jamie Collins. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. But again, given the price difference, 5,000 coins to 60,000 coins, my personal opinion is that Jamie Collins is a much better value at the 5,000 coins than Ahmad Brooks is at 60,000 coins. So hopefully that helps you out, guys. And now the final comparison that we are going to do for today's video is what I call your user-controlled outside linebackers. Now, these are the players who really, they're, what you were looking for in them is specific attributes. So I've given you the 12 attributes that we normally look for and things like, you know, awareness, play recognition, uh, pursuit, all of those type of things. They all really come down to when your user controlling them, you. So if you recognize that it's going to be play action, you can just bite, you know, you don't have to bite on it like the player does if they're being computer controlled. You can just go straight after that tight end or straight after the, the deep ball down the field or, or whatever the case might be. And you don't really have to get affected at all by their inability to, if they, you know, if they had a 40 for awareness or something like that, they're going to get toasted every single time on those play actions. But if your user controlling them, that 40 in that category doesn't mean anything. It literally means nothing. So that's why I kind of spe specify the difference between your user-controlled players and your computer-controlled players. So as you can see here, I did just tr uh, change the graphic a little bit. All of the things that turned gray, awareness, play recognition, zone coverage, man coverage, and pursuit, all five of those attributes do not matter when you're user controlling them. They're they're irrelevant. Not, like the player doesn't play any differently at all depending on if they were a 99 or a 0. So that's why I tend to look at the other attributes when I'm when I'm thinking that I'm going to be user controlling these players a lot. So if you're somebody that user controls your outside linebackers a lot, these are the things that you want to look at. Speed, acceleration, strength, catching, tackling, hit power, Power move or finesse move if you like to pass rush with them, and, and that's kind of questionable. Some people do that. Some people don't. Uh, and then, if obviously, your block shedding as well does come into play. So that's why I, when I look at these attributes, I see the, the speed advantage significantly in, in favor of your item on your left, which is the budget item, Brandon Marshall. And it's not the wide receiver Brandon Marshall. It's the Denver Broncos left outside linebacker, 86 overall. This is a football outsider's gold item. It's going for about 7,500 coins at the moment, at the time that we're recording this video. And we're going to be comparing it to Vontae's Perfect, who is a 90 overall. Again, another team captain card here. So these are some good cards that we're comparing it to. But Brandon Marshall has a six speed advantage. That is very, very significant, especially when you're user controlling because you're tending to be more all around the field running and, and you know, keeping up with guys and, you know, covering over the middle of the field and stopping the run and trying to protect against being ran on by quarterbacks and things like that. All that stuff comes into play with your strength or your speed and acceleration, obviously. And then he does also have an advantage in catching, which I think is nice. It's not still an excellent attribute being that it's only a 67, but it is still three higher than Vontae's perfect. And he's only one 
one lower in tackling, so they're just about identical in that area. Now, the one area where I will, where I will say that there is kind of a significant difference here is that Vontaze Burfecht does have a 96 for hit power, whereas Brandon Marshall's only checking in with an 89, and then the 93 block shedding for Burfecht versus Brandon Marshall being an 88. Now, we talked again about how that all those types of things can, you know, they can kind of change depending on what you're doing with the player. If you're if you're playing against the run or things like that, strength and block shed are very, very important. Um, whereas if you're playing in coverage, strength and block shed are completely irrelevant. So again, it really kind of depends on what you're doing on the specific play. But at the end of the day, I think that you can make a case that Brandon Marshall is a better card to actually user control than Vontaze Perfect is, despite the fact that Vontaze Perfect is going for, you know, seven, eight times the price of Brandon Marshall. And that really is significant. There is a huge price difference here between these two items. So my, my opinion, again, if you're trying to build a budget team, um, you really have to t try and look at players who are, you know, quality in all these different categories depending on what it is that you specifically need for your team so hopefully this video helped you out guys i really i tried to break it down into as many different categories as i can of course i would be glad to hear your opinions on these items as well let me know if i made any mistakes or anything like that or if you disagree with me on an item over another one if you guys have any suggestions on other items that might fit this category of 43 outside linebacker let me know in the comment section below as well and let me know why it is that you like the item let me know if he fits into a specific category or if he's a good user control player or whatever it might be just let me know in the comment section below and i would be glad to go ahead and uh comment on that with you guys and, and converse and try and you know determine other players that might be helpful for other people as well so thank you guys hope you enjoyed the video if you did please be sure to hit that like button and if you're new to the channel of course be sure to hit that subscribe button check out the rest of this playlist as well if you guys are interested in seeing some other players that are good at other positions in in terms of budget items. So hopefully this guys this helps you out guys. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.